Hello everyone and welcome to today's um, Agribusiness in Focus series uh, episode. Today we're going to be talking about uh, growth in ag tech in Australia and we're lucky to have Michael Macalino with us here. From, um, he's our expert in the ag tech space and um, he's going to step us through what he's seeing in the industry at the moment. Michael, over to you. Fantastic. Thanks, Jody. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically what I want to run through today is a little bit of an overview of the ag tech ecosystem and uh, how it's grown in recent times and uh, you know what the technologies are that um, are being considered and being incorporated into agriculture uh, and also some of the trends that we're seeing so particularly in the investment and the commercialization of ag tech um, and uh, Jody as I'm going through these please um, feel free to sort of jump in with any questions well, so um, Thanks. I think a great place to start is probably to, to sort of look uh, retrospectively um, over the past sort of two or three years um, and, and really how uh, an ecosystem has come together to support new technologies in agriculture. Uh, so it's definitely been a little bit different over the past uh, sort of 12 or 18 months um, since we, we've all sort of had um, this COVID world. Um, but, but prior to that, um, we really saw a, a gathering of a whole range of different people coming together. Um, some of the images that are on the screen um, are basically uh, some of the events that have really started to come together in the ag tech ecosystem to, to bring together startups, um, investors, uh, people from, from research, people from, from agriculture, um, across all different sectors together. Um, so we've got some images there from Avoke Ag, which uh, last happened back in, um, in Melbourne uh, in uh, February of, of 2020. Um, at that event, we saw about 1,400 people. Uh, we saw uh, many people from overseas come together um, as well. Um, and that was a great way to, to showcase where we're at with ag tech, uh, showcase the different innovations, the different startups, um, different thinking as well from uh, many of the, um, the RDCs around the country and sort of how they are uh, starting to transfer and translate their research into commercial outcomes. Uh, but what we've also seen around the country is these, this grassroots movement. Um, so we've, we've basically got a couple of images there of, of some field days. Um, so we're now seeing um, ag tech developers um, and ag tech startups starting to really, um, you know, focus on getting into the field, focus on uh, starting to, you know, get their technologies um, in the hands of farmers um, and getting farmers to actually tell the stories of how they're using that. Um, and uh, we've, we've then seen some smaller conferences, like we've got Advanced Ag uh, here in South Australia, uh, which is run by Persa. Uh, so really what we're seeing is this sort of catalyst of this community coming together to, to talk about use cases of technology and agriculture, to talk about how technology is being um, invested um, uh, by and, and sort of um, grown and how teams are coming together to evolve the technology and evolve the companies behind it. So um, this has really started to, to take shape over the past couple of years. Michael, have you seen so, that the, um, Michael, have you seen that the discussions have been really focused on you know, what the farmers need in there as opposed to, you know, the, back a while ago, it might've been a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and this is something that, uh, you know, myself uh, personally with uh, the Ag Tech Meetup group um, in South Australia um, that myself and, and a guy called Oli Madget, um, we've been trying to do is get the Ag Tech developers sort of out of the lab, out of the incubator um, and co-working spaces in the cities and get them out to the regions and get them um, sort of speaking with farmers. Um, now, we have seen that increase. Uh, we've seen lots of initiatives to sort of have these rural hubs um, where farmers can connect with um, ag tech companies um, and uh, farmers have been really engaged. So that's been fantastic to see. Um, and I think a lot of the people in the ag tech ecosystem that are developing technologies have been um, really appreciative of farmers um, to sort of detail their pain points and communicate how they're currently doing things. And, and really there's, there's been this sort of leveling up over the past probably 12 months where um, uh, both farmers and, and ag tech companies have, have sort of tried to, to share stories and start to sort of speak each other's language. Uh, and that, that's had a, a massive um, impact on um, the sort of the, the fit for purpose nature of many of the technologies that we're seeing coming to market. Yeah, excellent, excellent. This year, you've got a slide up at the moment about connecting the ecosystem with all the different stakeholders. Does that, that kind of encompasses what we're 
what we're talking about there and that taking a little bit further by the look of it. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I, I threw this, uh, you know, this term ag tech ecosystem out um, quite regularly um, and, and it is spoken about and, and sort of referenced in a lot of um, podcasts and, and blog articles and so forth. But, um, you know, having been involved in many different types of, of startup um, areas such, such as fintech and accounting, um, technology and so forth. Um, there, there's different types of ecosystems that come together to, to create these commercial solutions. I think agriculture and ag tech is probably uh, one of the best examples of um, an ecosystem coming together to, to produce an outcome. Um, and, and that is really because traditionally in agriculture, we have had all of these stakeholders who work together to basically um, progress agriculture forward and, and ag tech um, is, is sort of the latest addition to that existing ecosystem. So, um, you know, within Australia, obviously everything starts with the producer, starts with the farmer. Um, you know, we have there, um, particularly in, um, in you know, the past, uh, you know, recent years, the, the prominence of the RDCs, so um, organisations like AgriFutures Australia and Wine Australia um, and their relationship between uh, the, the producer and, and sort of helping to drive research uh, for the producer. Um, but then we also have, you know, uh, corporations and larger agribusinesses as well stepping up and really, you know, playing a, a larger role in, in research and commercialization as well. So there, there's always been and, and there continues to be this relationship between uh, the producer, um, R&D organisations and then sort of like the larger agribusinesses to really um, promote and, and progress um, different types of crop types, different types of, um, uh, you know, synthetic um, uh, inputs. Uh, you've got your, your different types of, um, you know, uh, implements and so forth that have been coming to market to, to help the efficiency and precision agriculture. Um, none of that works in isolation. Um, and ag tech has sort of started to, to bolt into that and, and be a new part of that ecosystem. Yeah, well, one of the things I'm seeing when I'm talking to people in the industry is that everyone's really just trying to find better solutions. Like everyone's trying to work together, even though, and, and, it's, and it's starting to come together. It was probably a bit join, disjointed, but it's actually starting to come together and everyone you're talking to is going, okay, who can we collaborate with to try and yep. actually get the outcomes that, um, that will help um, the whole ecosystem and the whole supply chain along the way. So, yeah, it's been really positive on there. There's still there's still ways to go, but um, yes. the, the, what I've heard is that, it, yeah, it's a, it's been moving in the right direction. Yeah, and I mean, we, we're, we're always having these conversations about how we improve it. I think, um, you know, one of the words you said there was collaboration and, and that is the, 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 the central uh, theme. Uh, and, and I think the thing that's really going to uh, create real results and that's collaboration at all levels. Um, that's collaboration between uh, producers and, and universities. Um, it, it's the investors um, starting to get involved to have a deeper understanding of, of where the opportunities yeah. lie. Um, but I think most importantly collaboration between the ag tech startups themselves. Uh, many of the ag tech startups have, have sort of found that when they work together um, and they share data um, and, and they sort of share use cases and they see how, you know, their um, technology or their IP can be combined with the technology of another company um, that can, you know, when it's integrated properly, create some real solutions for, um, for agriculture. Um, and, and that's where um, I think we need to move more into because, um, you know, that, that's one of the, the friction points is that lack of collaboration leading to, um, you know, these siloed applications which don't really sort of, you know, hit the, hit the bullseye for producers. Yeah, that, there's always been a lot of different things around the place and, and yes, what, what, what you hear from the producers and, and everyone along the supply chain is that nothing just does everything and then mm. that's where um, trying to collaborate on that I think is, is the next step forward and, and continue that collaboration process. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're definitely, uh, you know, uh, moving along with that. Um, and uh, I, I've seen it particularly in the last 12 months. I think uh, mm. what we've seen is that COVID has sort of forced people to uh, rethink the way they do things and, and sort of, you know, even though we've been very isolated in some ways, it's actually forced many people to collaborate. Um, and, and, you know, we've seen a lot of that interstate as well. Mm. So um, I might move on to sort of our, our next slide, which is um, around 
um, connecting our food system. Um, and this is something that is um, incredibly important if we're going to have a meaningful change to um, to agriculture and, and the way that um, agriculture impacts um, the environment, but also in the way that we can actually, um, uh, you know, improve our food security. Um, you know, one of the driving forces for uh, for agriculture um, and, and ag tech is, you know, how do we feed a growing population um, over the next 30 years uh, with, you know, uh, resource scarcity, um, you know, some, some considerations around climate change and, and, you know, carbon emissions and the impact that, that agriculture has on climate. Um, but also, how do we do that with less? So, you know, we, we have, um, you know, more, uh, you know, variability and unpredictability in our climate and in our weather patterns. Uh, we have uh, less water. I think if we have a look to California um, and the impact that they're having with drought um, over there, um, you know, we see that we have to do more with less. Um, and the way that we, we need to do that is we need to have this very much holistic uh, full system um, consideration to agriculture um, and how and what technology's role is in that. So uh, I think probably two years ago, um, we saw ag tech really focusing purely on farming systems. So ag tech was very focused on how do we put sensors into the field? Uh, how do we take the data from those sensors to, to provide some type of dashboard or some type of insight back to the farmer? Um, and it was very production focused. And then what we've seen over the last um, over the last year is almost that consumers in what they are expecting and what they want to see um, driving new approaches to to food. Um, so we're seeing the emergence of you know alternative proteins. Um, We've seen things like the V2 food um, uh, Whopper burger being, you know, distributed through through Hungry Jacks, um, and so so food is being driven by consumers. But then, in order for that food to exist, the, that sort of has a downstream effect on um, agricultural production, um, the price of commodities, and so forth. So, what um, many people in the ag tech ecosystem were starting to see is that food and agriculture were becoming more and more linked um, because there is this driver to not only produce the raw commodity, but also to figure out how to value add. Um, and consumers are really starting to, to sort of be more and more part of that conversation around uh, the types of food. Um, they want to know where their food has come from. Um, they, they, you know, they, their habits and demographics in, in our populations are changing as well. So food and agriculture, um, production are becoming more and more intrinsically linked. One of the other things that's kind of coming up more probably internationally in there is the environment, environmental, social and governance reporting requirements, which ties directly into this traceability provenance story in there, which um, is part of this linking the whole supply chain up with any of the components that come through there that um, that's really driven from that environmental need to, to kind of understand what's going on and how it's being done. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, mean, I think that the provenance part, um, you know, when it initially started to get spoken about, it was a little bit gimmicky. It was a bit sort of, you know, you'll scan a, a code on your food and, you know, you'll see all the steps in the supply chain and, and everything like that. Um, that, that, you know, some people were able to roll that out and it, it provided quite a, a novel solution, um, but there was uh, you know, a slow uptake because there was always that question of, okay, is this actually adding value? Are people using it? Um, who pays for that, that extra layer of, of sort of infrastructure to monitor that? But what we're now seeing is that um, there is an environmental um, component that can be played into that is that, you know, we need to be much more mindful of the inputs um, and and the impact on environment. How much water has gone into into the production of um, of food? Um, you know what has been the the result of, of land degradation? Yeah, I can't say it at the moment. Degradation on producing that food. Um, you know what was the CO two emitted through the production mm -hmm. and transport of those goods? Um, you know there is an environmental cost to the way that we produce food. Um, and producers are becoming um, more and more mindful of that and, and want to see that. So not only do they want to see where their food has come from, but they also want to see what has been the environmental impact of that food, uh, because that is helping them to make better um, choices in terms of the way they consume that food. Um, so along that supply chain, and as we sort of start to uh, move into new ways of, of fin uh, funding and, and financing food, of transporting food, um, you know, we see new markets like carbon markets, et cetera, 
um, come about. What that's creating is all these new business models where um, you know people can be incentivized through technology for doing the right thing and the way they actually produce, transport, and and manufacture food. Um, so some really interesting things that are coming about um, as a result of sort of connecting um, these three elements together. And then, and then looking for efficiency then there by using ag tech along the way to actually be able to um, have a better environmental outcome or, or so forth around the place as well. So. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Really I mean, the, um, the the core of this, and we'll probably speak about this in, in the next slide, is, um, you know, all of these technologies uh, come together to create these solutions. Nothing is uh, sort of thought about um, from an ag tech developer perspective in isolation. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the more that we can think of things um, holistically, uh, the, the sort of the better the, the food system will be. Um, but, but we also need to sort of, um, you know, consider the commercial uptake, you know, I see a lot of um, hammers looking for nails in agriculture in ag tech. Um, so, you know, we, we need to sort of start at that first principles level and sort of look at the food system as a whole um, and then sort of build solutions on top of that. So, so um, yeah, all the technologies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah all, all the different things that are going on in the industry at the moment. It, it's probably hard to summarise it all um, into a few different categories, but I see that you've uh, had a good uh, good crack at um, putting together a few different of the key ones that are in the industry at the moment. Do you want to run through them with us? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, I um, you know, am a technologist um, at heart. Um, I was a, a CTO um, in my, my previous company uh, when I used to build startups. Um, so technology is, is really something that has always fascinated me and is sort of the core of, of what I research and think about day in, day out. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons I, I, I do a lot of work in, in ag tech and agriculture is that we have the convergence of all of these technologies. Um, you know, many people would have heard of Industry 4.0. Um, agriculture really is an industry which can make use of almost all of the Industry 4.0 type technologies. Um, so, you know, we've all heard of things like Internet of Things, of the cloud, of artificial intelligence. Um, the solutions that we're seeing in agriculture exist because developers and ag tech companies are figuring out how they can combine these technologies for the first mm -hmm. time at scale, at a um, affordable price to actually offer those technologies um, to farmers to solve particular on-farm challenges. And, and many of these things, even, you know, five years ago were either, you know, too clunky, uh, too expensive um, or, or limited because one technology wasn't quite mature enough to sort of really hit the mark on what was needed. Um, you know, and I think uh, connectivity is probably one of those things. You know, we have so many um, types of connectivity through satellites, through things like SpaceX with their Starlink network coming about, uh, you know, 5G, uh, more 4G available. All of these um, convergence of these different technologies uh, really is starting to come together uh, to sort of create these end-to-end -end solutions. Um, and we're gonna see this sort of start to um, almost have this sort of exponential uh, type of development curve over the coming years. And, and like you were saying before, the key thing with this is bringing together these different types of technologies to actually solve the problems, as opposed to just being able to put them together like a jigsaw puzzle and going, oh yep, these things might fit here. Actually working out what yeah. picture you're trying to, trying to create or what problem you're trying to solve um, as a first point and then utilising all the different technologies that are available to try and, try and bring it together. Yeah, definitely. And this is why it's super important to start at that sort of first principles um, level. Uh, and to start with the pain point within the industry and, and then to then go to this toolbox of um, technologies and of solutions uh, to, to sort of, you know, build that solution um, from these components. Um, and with the work that I do, uh, you know, uh, with commercialization of ag tech and, and working a lot with startups, I'm always telling them, you know, how do we, you know, not try and build this, you know, perfectly, um, you know, designed and, um, you know, this perfect product with a bow on it. How do we create this technology in a way that it can be a component of a much larger solution in agriculture? Because there's so many nuances, there's so many different farming systems, there's so many different subsectors and so forth within agriculture that if you create this, um, you know, 
black box of the technology in, in agriculture, um, it, it doesn't quite have the impact or it makes it very hard to get to scale. Um, mm. But if you create a technology that can be a component in a larger solution, um, you, you as a startup um, have a, a much more um, you know, uh, a much more better chance of actually getting that thing to scale. Um, investors see a greater potential of that. But the most important thing is it actually can have a meaningful impact to to the agricultural industry. Excellent, excellent. So, because I've got the insights of knowing uh, what the next slide is, how big is this opportunity that we've got for Australia at the moment in the ag tech market? And globally? Yeah, so I mean, globally, the opportunity is huge. Um, and globally, uh, you know, we've, we've seen this start to really accelerate um, over the past uh, five years. Um, Australia is still behind, and, and I'll touch on that in our, in our next slide. Um, but globally, um, you know, we, we, we get this uh, information from a, um, a source called AgFunder. So uh, if you have a look at AgFunder, um, they put out some great news on a daily basis. They also put out these annual reports where they uh, get all of the funding that's happened across um, uh, the ag tech industry and, and start to basically analyze that. So, you know, we saw um, the global market for ag tech in terms of, you know, the actual uh, you know, farmers, uh, food industry, the entire supply chain purchasing, this is $500 billion. That's growing at 8% per annum. So it, it is um, a, an area where these external forces, such as the need to you know, do more with less and, and feed a growing population, uh, are driving the, the traditional agricultural industry to, to look for solutions. So that is driving that growth. Um, and we saw, you know, uh, $26.1 billion raised by startups in, uh, in 2020. Now, some of that was uh, later stage rounds um, and quite a lot of that was in um, the areas such as um, alternative proteins um, and synthetic biology. Uh, so you have some of these biotech companies which are using microbes uh, to uh, have an alternative to chemical agriculture. Um, so some of those companies, uh, you know, raised some pretty significant uh, rounds of funding in the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, but we also saw, you know, that that was invested um, into a growing number of companies. So, you know, 2,700 uh, odd companies uh, globally uh, in the ag tech space had investment in 2020. Um, and, and that was uh, from a growing number of, of investors. So, you know, around two and a half thousand investors actually participated um, in, in investment rounds into startups within um, globally uh, in the agri space. So what we're seeing is that many um, corporates are now starting to go, you know what, rather than us trying to do R&D internally, we have all of these startups that we can actually invest in. So we're seeing corporate VC play a larger role in the investment space uh, for ag tech. Uh, things like Syngenta Ventures and Bayer Ventures um, are participating and, and basically investing in startups, which eventually you know, become opportunities for them to acquire rather than trying to sort of spend and do that R&D internally. Um, but we're also seeing you know, uh, the likes of Tenacious Ventures in Australia, the likes of um, Artesian Ventures as well, who are, have dedicated agri-food tech funds uh, that they're actually deploying into Australian startups to, to give them that investment that's required to, to grow um, in those early stages uh, until we start to get to you know, what could be an exit event through either an acquisition or an IPO. So it is a massive opportunity. Uh, we're seeing the business models of ag tech get better and better um, and uh, investors are starting to sort of get an understanding of where the growth opportunities are. So uh, again, you know, as, as this ecosystem matures, the opportunity becomes um, clearer. Uh, ag tech companies understand uh, what is required to, to, to uh, actually get investment um, and also to scale. So uh, definitely been, uh, you know, a, an increase in the maturity and the sophistication um, of investment in ag tech. Is that, is that mainly because of the, the exposure of the knowledge around it or is there also the environmental factors around, you know, COVID and, and different industries now saying, hey, ag is probably now a, a less risky venture than what we thought it was pre-COVID, knowing that, you know, anything can happen in the world and, and food is, is such a key part of, of what we need on a day-to-day -day basis that that's kind of changing people's perspective from a corporate investment um, angle to then see that, yeah, let's have a look at this and let's find out what the drivers are in here to see what they, the risk profile actually is as opposed to beforehand it was possibly seen as a bit more of a risky venture. 
Yeah, we've definitely seen COVID have an impact. Um, you know, I think that in the future, you know, supply chains will be built for resilience. Um, mm -hmm. We saw last year, um, you know, when COVID broke out into some of the um, uh, abattoirs um, over overseas, we saw abattoirs uh, shut down. Um, so, so you know, that has a huge impact on the on the price of meat, um, the availability of, of meat. Um, you know, we see when borders are closed, you know, we're seeing now, you know, uh, supply chain issues around the world. So, you know, what all countries are going to start to do is look at their su food supply chain end to end and, and redesign that to try and mitigate the risk that uh, COVID has shown them can exist and, and come, can become a reality very, very quickly. Um, and technology has a huge role to play in that. Uh, so not, not only in you know, the way that we, we transport our, our food, uh, but also I think you know, many organisations um, are understanding that they need to be more sustainable. You know, they, they can't necessarily produce you know, a raw commodity in Australia, you know, send it overseas to be, to be manufactured and import it back into Australia to be sold. Um, we need to be more vertically integrated uh, and, and technology has a, a role to play in making vertical integration cost effective. So th these um, investments are being driven by, by quite significant macroeconomic trends. Um, and uh, there's, there's a lot of really good research that's going into that. Um, and uh, it's definitely what investors are seeing and what investors are starting to, to you know, gear up to, to back. Excellent. So what about in Australia then? What can we do? Yeah, so I mean, as I said right at the beginning of this presentation, this is this is the last slide that I have. Um, you know, we have come a long way in Australia. Um, I started getting involved in ag tech probably just over three years ago. Um, it was very much a grassroots ecosystem there. We have grown significantly. Uh, we've seen some uh, companies uh, actually I just not. No, I thought I had another slide. We've seen some companies in Australia um, have some really significant rounds. So we've seen companies like AgriWeb. Uh, we've seen companies like AgriDigital uh, who have um, started to, you know, go from that very early stage um, in raising those early seed rounds and they've grown their teams and now they've been able to sort of raise, uh, you know, $5 million plus rounds of capital. I think AgriWeb raised $30 million and then they've been able to sort of go international with that capital. So. We've seen companies uh, sort of break out and do this and, and start to really get to scale and become global competitors um, in the agri-food space. Um, but we're still behind the scenes. If we have a look at um, the, uh, the slide, uh, the, the, the chart there, you know, this is agri-food investment in 2020. Um, so you can see, you know, the United States leading significantly there with just over $13 billion of investment. Australia doesn't currently make that list. Um, and, and we can, you know, we have uh, a, a, you know, a food and agricultural sector um, in Australia that is $60 billion a year. We currently invest, uh, I think, just over $1.3 billion a year through the RDC system into, uh, into agricultural research. The, the frameworks, the foundation for Australia to be a leader um, in, in ag tech uh, and agri-food innovation are there. Uh, we just need to sort of coordinate the ecosystem to probably um, mit mitigate uh, a little bit of, um, uh, of sort of wastage. I think there are some things that we're trying to make things bigger than they can be uh, or bigger than they should be. And, and therefore we sort of, you know, maybe burn a few bridges along the way. Um, but also the government needs to understand that ag tech is not a subservient industry to agriculture. Ag tech in its own right can actually be a $20 billion um, uh, industry in its own right in itself. Um, and, and we can create ag tech in Australia that can then be exported to the world. Um, and and we're, Australia has uh, you know, an amazing history of um, agricultural innovation and exporting that agricultural innovation uh, globally. So. Um, you know, I think we've, we've got the, the basis of, of a huge amount of potential in Australia, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, and that's what, you know, myself uh, and many other people within the ag tech ecosystem are, are really focused on is, is how do we, first of all, get Australia on this list uh, and then move ourself, uh, ourselves up that list. Um, and also in the process, help uh, the agricultural, uh, agricultural industry in Australia 
go from that $60 billion um, uh, yearly uh, industry that we currently have up to more of that $100 billion industry, which is the, the well-known target um, by 2030. Excellent. Well, thank you, Michael, for your time today. And um, it's no great, it's been great. Um, it's always good to talk to you, um, but it's good to be able to share this with the audience there. So if anyone has any questions on ag tech or anything around that kind of environment, feel free to reach out to Michael um, or myself, but Michael's the expert in the ag tech space. And um, yeah, be more than happy to have a chat. Thanks for listening. Fantastic. Thanks, Jody. It's been fun. Thanks. Bye.